<laughs> Welcome to Marketing Monday. I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you folks out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. So, so today we're going to be talking about... Um, exaggeration in sales and personal branding, which is a subject that has been in movies and social media and a lot of places in the last week, so we thought it was very timely to, to talk about. Implications and implications thereof. What can possibly go wrong, wrong and how to avoid it. So um, thanks for joining us. And so here's what happened as far as the social media side of this goes. Um, there's a fairly well-known artist uh, that's been on the um, air show circuit mm -hmm. doing great art and, you know, has had a, a fairly successful career um, in a lot of different places. Uh, you may know um, Sherry Boggs or the 48th um, Maintenance Company. Um, and, you know, it was a really fairly successful um, scenario. You know, she had uh, quite a bit of... Uh, uh, social media following and things like that, and I assume she was selling lots of of uh, materials and things and stuff. Stuff, you know, and everything was great. So, um, you know, and this is the sort of thing that we hate to see because, you know, somebody has a business that's running along fairly smoothly, and uh, you know they don't need to exaggerate. She had a lot of successful things going on. You know, a lot of great work that people liked. Um, a lot of people already liked her work on uh, on social media. I'm assuming that she had a pretty good uh, business going at the air shows and things like that. I've never personally run into her. No. Nope. But um, what happened to her is something that could happen to anybody who is kind of unguarded and maybe a little, you know, um, exaggerating <laughs> on social media and elsewhere. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things people could get away with for a number of years because... Uh, you know, it's kind of a tradition in aviation that people do what they call hangar flying, and it's just between two people, and it, no, it doesn't go any further. But nowadays, anything that you say uh, uh, can be checked out within seconds, right? Yeah, I mean, if you exaggerate and then catch it and back it out mm -hmm. soon, yeah, whatever that means, then you're okay. Exactly, exactly. It's a very forgiving audience, it seems, but there are some things that they are not so forgiving of, right? <laughs> Um, and one of these was, you know, when talking with people on, on Facebook, a lot of people kind of come under the impression that they're talking to one person, right? Mm. Well, not so. Right. You know, you get into the, the um, rhythm of having a conversation with someone and, you know, you just say things and things like that. And in this um, case, you know, uh, this person said some things that somebody decided to check out. Mm. And, uh, you know, in this case, giving some fairly specific uh, details about where she got training, where she, you know, flew specific aircraft and, and other kinds of things. And it turned out to be um, a little more than was absolutely true, right? Yeah. Or at I least mean, verifiably true, we'll put it that any, way. Any of those of us in the military that have been through undergraduate pilot training, either for helicopters, jets, or, or the new stuff... Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, very obvious. Right, exactly. So, you know, by putting some of these details out there, you need to make sure that when you do mention things, and we do recommend that people get fairly specific with things that are true, mm -hmm. uh, but if, if they're not verifiable facts, uh, people get kind of cranky about those kinds of things, right? Um yeah, and well, they should. Yeah, and particularly about uh, military service and other kinds of things. And, uh, you know, in some cases, it uh, if you use photographs, um, you want to make sure that they are original photographs because people can see, you know, somebody looked this up on on Facebook, um, you know, and said it took me exactly five seconds to find the image that you stole and photoshopped. And it's fairly obvious because of the placement of you know, the background and other kinds of things, it is not easy to get away with a Photoshop, even if you are a professional, right? Exactly. Okay. So three days later, you know, <laughs> talking about this story, what's the damage, right? Facebook page is gone. Um, company page has been removed after um, getting about 40 plus bad one-star reviews. You know, five stars is, is great. One star is bad. <laughs> Um, page has since been deleted. Uh, there are a bunch of Yelp reviews that can't be deleted, and those 
the record forever, basically. Right. Okay. You know, we have one of our, our members, you know, brought this to, to our attention and said, clearly this woman had a great following of, of veterans and uh, people in the air shows. Uh, the problem is... Uh, Basically, within this community, there's only so many women who have flown F-16s, <laughs> and they all know each other, <laughs> right? <laughs> or at least know about each other. It's so a selective club, I'd say. It is, currently. exactly. And, you know, only so many people who have flown F-16s, and they all know each other. Well, that's a larger club. Exactly. But, you know, this isn't really something I think that was intentional or malicious or anything else or anybody trying to take anything away from anybody else. And, you know, in this country, we have a fairly long tradition of tall tales and fish stories, right? <laughs> You've all heard about Paul Bunyan, right? Mm, of course. Um, and his big blue ox babe, right? Yes. Uh, and, you know, these kinds of things are often harmless. And I think even in the aviation community, sometimes you're sitting next to somebody and they start telling you something, you know, like, um, I saw... I had actually had a, an older gentleman tell me at, a, at an air show, I saw Chuck Yeager break the speed record at an air show. And, you know, I was thinking, well, that's kind of unlikely because you can't really see somebody break the speed <laughs> record. And it's not likely something that he would do at an air show. But it's not like I'm going to confront the guy and, yeah. you know, get irritated and things like that. Because, you know, people do get details mixed up and we don't jump all over them. And, you know, that's the way it is, right? Human beings are like that. Human beings are like that. Fish stories, right? Um, <laughs> my grandfather used to tell me that uh, tomato worms came from outer space, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it, it's just a thing that we do. Um, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, it's all, um, what is the word? Technically deception, but it's not meant in a horrible way, right? Right, but... There's also not having to do with business in any of those cases. That's true. Uh, here's someone who meant it in terms of business, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, the Greatest Showman, it was uh, a fairly big movie that opened a couple of weeks ago uh, about P.T. Barnum, who actually made a living, and his entire business was based on It'll things that were questionably verifiable, right? <laughs> Um, and, you know, a lot of the things that um, he did, you know, the, the bearded lady, the, you know, 95-foot crocodile, you know, other kinds of things were clearly exaggerations or clearly manufactured or um, exaggerated. But, you know, was that a terrible thing? In his case, probably not because it was in, in service of entertainment, you know, but you can argue that all day long. Uh, you know, all I'm saying is if you are doing sales or marketing, you really do need to be verifiable on all of your facts, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, I did one, right? <laughs> on my, yes, on my LinkedIn profile, I have certifications, uh, project management professional from PMI, right? And it expired. Don't tell anybody, right? Not now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I went back and I re redid all of the records and I filled out oh, all the forms okay. and I paid my back dues and did all of those things. But, you know, I only renew it every two years and it had expired for about a week. And if anybody had gone to my LinkedIn profile and seen that it had expired, um, I'd be in deep doo-doo and it may have impaired people's perception of my credibility if that had been expired and somebody looked it up at that time, right? True. So, you know, once again, we all make mistakes, but if you do, <laughs> make sure you go back and fix it. Don't have anything on, and I know John's just dying here because I'm, you know, he didn't know I was going to reveal this about my uh, faux pas. But I think it's important that we know that, uh, you know, it's very likely that it happens to pretty much anybody. But as long as you are very clear about especially certifications, training that you've had, things that you've done, accomplishments that you've made, and so on, and make sure that those are all up-to-date, verifiable, and if somebody goes to PMI to look that up, they're going to see a current certification, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is how you do it right. This is um, a uh, profi profile from Lori, Wright. Lori White. Excuse me. Um, who is known as the luxury guru. She does a lot of marketing in the high net worth and ultra high net worth markets. And this was actually in Forbes magazine. I think this is actually pretty well done. 
I think this is a really nice headline. Anybody could do this. You know, what people don't know about John F. Williams, aviation consultant, right? You could do that. I suppose I could. Yeah. Uh, um, she's got a professional photograph. There is nothing falsified or fake about this, uh, as far as we know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I've not seen her that I know of. Exactly. But still, you know, there's nothing um, wrong with looking your best, and there's nothing wrong with... Uh, with making um, the best possible first impression, uh, as long as it's true, right? Um, and the other thing is she talks mostly about her customers who are royals and billionaires, right? She's not talking about herself. True. So, you know, these are verifiable facts or not specific enough to be verifiable, which is also another way of, of, uh, of handling things. If you don't have a lot of experience and things like that, you can frame things in a way that puts things in the best possible light without being deceptive. So you crossed out that line, was that... Uh... No, I'm underlining. Well, it's okay, so the software screwed up. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, the other side is about, uh, you know, my... Unique... My unique niche is matching the world's wealthiest demographics. So, you know, that's uh, about her customers, not necessarily about herself, right? True. And, you know, talking about what you do, not necessarily about what you have done in the past, uh, you know, that's another good way to frame it in a positive way and frame it in a, um, a forward-looking way. Mm -hmm. All right. So another thing that we like to see are real authentic photos. They don't have to be perfect uh, as long as they're authentic. In fact, authentic is better than perfect. Um, this is Brian Chase and his family. Uh, you know, I think this is a really good one that kind of shows personality and, uh, you know, a really great colorful piece there. Um, this photo is from SSC, Special Services Corporation, showing things in action, you know, things being done. Uh, it's not a perfect staged Perfectly lighted photo. It's a very nice photo, but it's... Uh, and it was just taken off the cuff when the guy didn't know it. Exactly. And that shows authenticity and, you know, that you really do what you say you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, showing is better than telling. Um, this is uh, Shane Ballman. He's our uh, uh, Silicon Valley startup incubator guy <laughs> doing what he does, which is uh, pitching. And, you know, he's our probably the world's best pitch person as far as I know, uh -huh. uh, channeling Steve Jobs there. So uh -huh. that's a very good one. This is Benet Wilson reporting on a very unique aviation event. Uh, this was the 747 MAX's flight to... The last one. The last one to Hawaii, exactly. And, uh, you know, so she got a really nice photo there with uh, the folks involved and uh -huh. shows that she was definitely on the scene, and she always is. That's what she does, right? Yep. So showing people doing their thing, I think, is a, a really good thing. This last one is uh, John and I with Penn Gillette. Um, we were at a uh, an event where he was speaking about marketing. He mm -hmm. actually is one of the really great marketing strategists of our time, in um, addition to being a magician, right? Magician. 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 I said yes. magician. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was a really great event and, you know, my hair was all over the place, but <laughs> I still use the photo because the subject was more important than the substance, right? Or sure. the composition of the photo, not the best lighting, not the best uh, hair, but, <laughs> but we'll go with it. So, you know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, people get too hung up on. You are, if you're in business, what you are doing is enough if you frame it in a way that people will connect with and in a way that people will identify with and the people that way in a way that people want to do business with you, right? True. Okay. So, um, another thing you can do is what we call the race car graphic. Um, I like this for building credibility because it shows all of the places that you've been published or that you are a member of. Uh, but once again, you have to make sure that this is absolutely positively verifiable. So every one of these things is absolutely positively verifiable. And if somebody looked us up on any one of those things or asked us um, about any of these things, I could provide uh, more information to, to back that of up. Of course. All right. So, yeah, um, very important to... Uh, you don't have to tell people everything in your first impression, warts and all, right? Um, but you do want to make sure that you are being credible with the information that you do share in your sales and marketing. Of course. Right? 
Yes. Okay. All right. So this week we are launching our aviation sales training course, um, our aviation sales basics, which is the uh, module one of that course. And uh, so this is the first week that anybody anywhere on the planet can register for this. So, uh, you know, we really look forward to seeing you there, uh, aviationsalestraining.com. And it's really designed for people in aviation. Well, that was a little exaggeration because I've already registered for it. Oh, that's true. But you test registered for it. <laughs> Good point. Just saying. He was our um, <clears throat> beta customer for that, you know. But uh, um, still... <laughs> This is the first week that any of the rest of you people who are not John Williams can register for this course. And uh, it's really designed for aviation people who may not have as much experience or training in sales as they would like. True. And, uh, you know, to provide very specific training and, you know, things that we wish we had known when we started doing sales in the aviation industry. So it's a very concentrated course. Uh, it's going to be about 11 units. Each unit is going to have a video like this one, uh, followed by an activity like a quiz or, you know, a, a something that you need to do in order to complete that uh, that unit. So it's very interactive and very intensive, mm -hmm. but it's going to take about 11 hours to complete the entire session. You can do that in a month. You could do that in three months. You know, you can take your time. You can do whatever you like with that. But, um, you know, we're hoping that you'll... Uh, sign up for that and tell, you, tell us what you think as you're going through it because, you know, once again, this is brand new and we are looking for uh, opinions from people as they go through it. True. Right? All right. So thank you for joining us. We enjoyed talking with, talking with you as always and we'll see you again next Monday. Have a great day.